Hello and welcome to another SitePoint screencast on React.js. I am Michael Chan and today we are building a stopwatch component. I have it up and running right here so you can see what happens. So we'll hit start, the timer will start, and we can hit stop to stop it. Now this is a very basic component, but we're actually going to be building up this component over the next couple of videos. Today's video is a little different in that I am not going to show you any new React concepts. I just want to show you how the ones we already know work in practice. Today I'm going to be using JSBin. So if you're not familiar with it, you can go to JSBin.com. JSBin is a great place to practice writing components. There's very minimal setup and you can see updates in real time. So let's set up a project for React. The first thing we need to do is include the React library. So we'll go up to libraries, start typing React and select React 0.13. With that done, we can actually close this HTML pane. And in JavaScript, we're going to select JSX React. This allows us to write JSX directly here without having to mess with the script type. Let's start by rendering out a simple div just to make sure that everything's working. And let's zoom in just a little bit. Now that we know that's working, let's define our stopwatch component. We'll copy that. And here we'll define our stopwatch component. It's a React component. We need to give it a spec object, which has a function render. And that function needs to return at least one element. So we'll paste in what we had before. I have a straight semicolon here, and now it should work. Now that we have this component set up, let's update this content. We'll just put placeholders in for right now. I'll use an H1 for the timer. Then I'll create a button to start. We'll copy that and make a button to stop. Now that we know what our component is supposed to look like, we can start hooking things up. Let's start with the start button. When this is clicked, we'd like to handle it with a function. So we use on click. And when it's clicked, we'll use the callback this.handle click. Let's define a placeholder for that right now. So we'll say handle click is a function. And for now, we'll just say alert starting. So when we click start, it'll alert that we're starting the timer. Of course, it's not actually starting a timer yet. It's just telling us that we're doing so. Let's give ourselves a little room here and do the same thing for stop. Now here we've already used this general function name handle click. So let's actually make this more specific. Let's say handle start click. Change that in both places. And then for stop, we can say on click this dot handle stop click. Again, we'll jump up here and define that. Handle stop click function. The will alert stopping. Perfect. So starting and stopping. Now we should go in and make our time a little bit more dynamic. Right now it's just the static zeros. For this, we'll use state, and we'll store that state on this dot state dot seconds elapsed. Now we can define get initial state to provide an initial state to our component. It's a function as well. And it returns an initial state object. In this case, it'll be seconds elapsed and zero. Now that the timer is dynamic, we need a way of actually formatting these seconds. We're going to write a couple functions of our own to do this. I'm going to start by changing our render method just a little bit. So instead of directly printing out seconds elapsed, I'm going to say this.getSeconds. Now that's a function, so I need to evaluate it by putting the parentheses at the end. I'll go up here and define that now. So we'll call that getSeconds. Again, it's a function. And we're going to do a little bit of math here. 
I want this to return just the seconds that can't be accounted as a minute. So we're going to divide by 60 and take the remainder. So here we'll return this dot state dot seconds elapsed modulus 60. Now if we change our seconds, we can see that the component updates. But there's a problem with this. When we have less than 10 seconds, we need a padding zero. So that's pretty simple. We could just add a zero to the beginning of this. But now if we have more than 10 seconds, we still get the padded zero. Well, again, we can solve this by just slicing off the last two digits and returning those. Perfect. So now it should work if we have 51 seconds or five seconds. So seconds is looking good. Let's try to do minutes now. So go back to our main render function. See this dot get minutes, same idea as before. We'll put that colon in there. Again, we'll create a new function called get minutes. It's a function. And for this, we want to return the number of times seconds elapsed is divisible by 60. Now that obviously isn't right, so we need to round this down. We we'll use math.floor to do that. Now if we change our seconds to 65, we should see one minute and five seconds, which we do. Now that we have the display of the clock figured out, it's time to turn our attention back to these handle start and handle stop click methods. Let's scroll up a bit. We'll start with our handle start click function. This is where we'll start a new timer. We'll use set interval to add a second to seconds elapsed every second. We'll write set interval, which takes function and a duration. In our function, we're going to call this dot set state. And we'll merge in an object with, with our new state. We'll be reassigning seconds elapsed to be the old value plus one. Now you probably noticed that I used underscore this in both of these places. That's because we need to keep a reference to the component instance inside of our set interval function. Now when we hit start, it should work. So now we just need a way to cancel that. Fortunately, we can store this on our component instance like so. And now it's just a matter of clearing that interval once someone hits the stop button. Let's give it a shot and see how we did. So we can start our counter, and we can stop it. Let's reset our initial component state to zero. And there we go, everything's working. We've covered an awful lot in starting the stopwatch component. You're probably starting to see that most of our problems we can solve with just vanilla JavaScript. In the next video, we're going to continue to develop this component out feature by feature. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Michael Chan with SitePoint. We'll see you next time.